meet the famous comedian Groucho Marx, known for making people laugh for many years. You might have seen him in movies like Duck Soup or A Night at the Opera. Do you remember when you first saw his work? Can you think of the time when you realized he had a unique way of making people laugh? Share your favorite memories or stories about this funny star below. Keep watching for interesting facts about him. Share your stories and memories. In the bustling streets of New York City during the late 19th century, a young boy emerged from a humble immigrant family. He was one of five brothers raised in the Lower East Side of Manhattan, where life was tough but laughter was abundant. Growing up in a world of struggle, he and his siblings found refuge in humor, entertaining those around them with their quick wit and antics. Despite dropping out of school to help support his family, he discovered his true passion in the world of entertainment, joining his brothers on the vaudeville stage. Together, they formed a comedic troupe that captured the hearts of audiences with their clever banter and hilarious slapstick routines. With his distinctive appearance, thick eyebrows, a mustache, and a perpetually present cigar, he became a familiar face in the world of comedy. Their journey was not without its challenges, facing financial hardships and personal conflicts along the way. Yet, through perseverance and talent, they achieved success, leaving an indelible mark on the world of entertainment. Their humor lives on, inspiring generations of performers who continue to bring joy and laughter to audiences around the globe. In a night at the opera, Otis B. Driftwood's character came alive with jokes punched up by screenwriter Al Boesberg. Producer Irving Thalberg's pressure on Boesberg led to an unexpected twist when the script vanished, only to be found ripped and nailed to the ceiling by Groucho. It took hours to restore, but they were pleased with Boesberg's work. Similarly, in Duck Soup, Rufus T. Firestone transformed into Rufus T. Firefly, a change from the original script. Names of characters like Ciccolini and Mistress Teasdale stayed, while Harpo Marx's character became Pinky, not Brownie as initially suggested. Additionally, he was the grandfather of actress Jade Marx. In a classic comedy, a renowned comedian delivered a memorable line, exclaiming, Jump an anaconda. This witty remark cleverly referenced the tumultuous events of a historic stock market crash where an investment in a copper company took a nosedive. It's impressive how seamlessly real-life financial woes were woven into on-screen antics. Behind the scenes, there was a moment of unexpected chaos when an actress took a tumble off a boat during filming. Despite her distress, the scene continued until concerned crew members intervened. This incident added a touch of real-life energy to the film's madcap vibe. Despite success on the silver screen, attempts at television didn't quite capture the same magic. Despite undeniable talent, three different TV series failed to leave a lasting impact. Throughout the movie and their careers, the comedic trio left a memorable legacy, blending wit, slapstick, and social commentary into an unforgettable mix. Their influence continues to be felt in the world of entertainment today. Regretting his lack of formal education, he made up for it by becoming an enthusiastic reader in adulthood, well known for his writing skills. He also regularly corresponded with famous authors and wrote several books himself. His son once found himself in a tricky situation when caught smoking a corncob pipe in his room. In a rush, he hid the still-lit pipe in a drawer. Upon discovery, he simply swapped it with a briar pipe, making light of the situation and joking about his own smoking habits. Another performer once mentioned that he could never follow the Marx Brothers on stage. Sharing a bill with them only once, he quickly realized a huge difference between his quiet comedy act and their lively performances. Reflecting on the experience, he humorously noted the unmatched energy and laughter generated by the Marx Brothers act. In the dimly lit theater, the screen flickers to life, casting shadows across the faces of the audience. The movie playing tonight holds a special place in the hearts of many, cherished for its timeless humor and memorable characters. As the protagonist immerses themselves in the antics unfolding on screen, they can't help but be drawn to the quick wit and charm of the lead character. It's not just a film, it's an experience that resonates deeply, reminding them of the power of laughter to uplift and inspire. Throughout the movie, the protagonist finds themselves captivated by the humor and wit displayed by the central figure. Like many others, they are drawn to the character's ability to command attention with a mere raise of an eyebrow or a well-timed quip. As the story unfolds, they can't help but see reflections of themselves in the character's journey, navigating life's complexities with humor as their guiding light. In the midst of laughter and applause, the protagonist is struck by the realization that comedy transcends boundaries, speaking to the universal human experience. It's not about grand messages or political significance, it's about the simple joy of making people laugh and finding moments of levity in the absurdities of life. 
Leaving the theater with a newfound appreciation for the power of comedy, the protagonist is filled with a sense of inspiration and determination. Armed with nothing but their wit and humor, they are ready to face whatever challenges come their way, finding solace in the laughter that brings people together. In one memorable performance, he smashed a violin on stage at Carnegie Hall as a mock tribute to Jack Benny. In another instance, he slipped a brief Jack Benny impression into his role as Otis B. Driftwood in A Night at the Opera, playfully cueing the orchestra with a familiar line. When screenwriters George Seaton and Robert Pirosh were brought in to fix early drafts of the script, he objected to their hiring due to their inexperience. Although they were quickly replaced, they later had the opportunity to collaborate with him in their next film, A Day at the Races. In Animal Crackers, he portrayed Captain Jeffrey T. Spaulding. This character name would later inspire Sid Haig's role in House of 1000 Corpses and The Devil's Rejects, among other aliases used by the Marx Brothers. He was the nephew of actor Al Sheen. And at the circus, he played attorney loophole, and during the song Lydia the Tattooed Lady, he referenced his character from Animal Crackers by singing Here is Captain Spaulding Exploring the Amazon. That's a nod to his role in the earlier film. In a beloved comedy, a famous actor brought to life an eccentric character, leaving a lasting impression on audiences worldwide. This portrayal inspired a renowned rock band to name one of their albums after the movie. The actor, in turn, expressed appreciation for the tribute in a heartfelt note. Later, on Broadway, echoes of the actor's comedic brilliance resounded once more. Another performer skillfully embodied a character reminiscent of the original, captivating audiences with wit and charm. One of the actor's most memorable performances featured a daring line that stirred controversy and sparked discussions. Through interviews, the actor fondly reminisced about the uproar caused by that infamous line. This enduring legacy continues to shape and inspire entertainers across generations, reminding us of the timeless allure of laughter and entertainment. In a classic comedy, a beloved comedian brought to life a memorable character, showcasing unparalleled wit and comedic timing alongside a talented writer. His performances on radio broadcasts became legendary, captivating audiences with banter and humor. Beyond on-screen antics, he was known for a passion for Gilbert and Sullivan operettas, often hosting delightful sing-along evenings at home. His love for the art form infused his life with the joy of music and camaraderie. During a notable period, he took on a role in a highly praised abridged rendition of a popular operetta on a major television network. His interpretation showcased versatility and magnetic presence, earning further acclaim from fans and critics. In another comedic gem, his portrayal of a character added hilarity to the film. Reflecting on the experience, amusing anecdotes were shared about the directors, highlighting their struggles and humorous observations, 